So there are a bunch of different special IPv6 addresses that you'll need to know. So take some notes. A bunch of zeros. That's the equivalent of all zeros in IPv4. Source address to the host when we're using stateful configuration, meaning DHCP. Loopback equivalent. All zeros and a one. A bunch of zeros, six spaces of zeros, and then IPv4 added on to the end. So that's the last 32 bits are IPv4. And this could be different numbers, but that's how we integrate IPv4 into an IPv6 network. We just cut out the last 32 bits and append it onto the end. 2000, globally unique address range. FC00, unique local unicast. FE80, link local unicast. Three and a bunch of Fs, reserved for testing and documentation, as well as 2001. ODB8 is also reserved for testing and documentation. FF00, multicasting. And then 2002 is used when transmitting IPv6 over an IPv4 network. So we can actually tunnel IPv6 over an IPv4 network if you want to integrate them. Now, let's go in and take a look at some configuration options and things we would have to consider when implementing IPv6. And you're configuring IPv6 with an IPv4 environment, you're going to have to tunnel it. So what's going to happen is you're going to encapsulate the IPv6 packets to run over an IPv4 network. Your NICs, if you want this to work, dual stack. You're going to have an IPv4 and an IPv6 address. You're going to need this, a device that can translate communication between IPv6 and IPv4 networks to get this functioning. Again, there's going to be very few full-on IPv6 networks, so there's going to be, have to be some sort of translation between those devices. Now, again, we don't have to be pros at IPv6. We just need to know the basics. So what I want to do is go through a sample configuration and the commands and what they are doing uh, with the IPv6 configuration. Here are some sample commands you might see when you're configuring IPv6. Global mode, IPv6 unicast routing, allowing the router to route IPv6 packets. You would give your interface an IPv6 address. And what this does, it says IPv6 address slash 64 is a prefix with the network ID and all that stuff. EY64 says, hey, take the MAC address and make that the last 64 bits of the address to represent this particular interface. Now, if we're going to be tunneling over an IPv4 network, we can go interface tunnel 0 and actually create a tunnel interface sourcing from interface GI 0 slash 0. The tunnel destination could be an IPv6 or IPv4 address as well as a host name. So we're saying it's coming from GI 0 0 going to this destination IP and tunnel mode IPv6 IP means we're encapsulating IPv6 addresses and sending it over an IPv4 network. Another command would be IPv6 router rip and this is enabling rip for IPv6. Palestra is the process ID to represent this particular process of rip running and enable means we're enabling it. So that's not a complete IPv6 setup in a network but it's some commands you might see and as well as what they do. I brought up my router because I've gone ahead and configured an IPv6 address on there. And what we can do is show IPv6 interface and it will show me the IPv6 addresses I have configured. Check it out, link local address. Just representing the local link, that FE80 link local. Part of the MAC address in the back here. Here's that FFFE part that gets buffered into that MAC address to make that link local address. 
the subnet, I said 76. I should have used the 2001, but I just said 76 for the subnet. And here's the rest of it. Remember, I put the EUI-64. It slaps that MAC address with that buffer in there onto the back end to give it the complete address. So very important information there. Now let's go in and configure this device as an IPv6 DHCP server. So if I want to configure my IPv6 DHCP server, IPv6 DHCP pool, and I can give it a name. But first I better be in global mode. IPv6 DHCP pool, and I can give it a name. Let's call it Palestra. Now I can go in and configure different parameters for it. I can specify a DNS server and specify the DNS server for the DHCP to give out. I can specify a domain name. Domain name. I can go in and specify the prefix delegation. Remember the prefix is the first part. The last part of the address is going to be that particular NICS MAC address. And so what I can do is I can go prefix delegation pool palestra and then I've got different options I can specify with this. I can go okay I'm going to give it lifetime addresses and I can specify how long I want them to keep those. Valid lifetime, expire prefix at a specific time and date, infinite valid lifetime. So I can go in and set different parameters with these lifetime commands. So again, this will tell me how long they're going to be able to keep these addresses. And then I can go to the interface and actually specify what addresses I'm going to give out. And I can also specify what prefixes I'm going to be giving out. So I can specify those and then specify certain things for the valid pool. So it's pretty cool what I can do here. Once I get this all set up, I would go into the to the interface and specify what DHCP parameters I'm going to be given out. So I go into interface GI0 slash 0 IPv6 DHCP server and then it's going to be using the parameters from the palestra pool. So pretty cool commands we can actually go in and run here. And that allows, remember the client is going to be using that stateless auto configuration. He's going to go to the server, to the, he's going to broadcast out and the router is going to answer, give him the prefix, and then the client's going to slap his MAC address with that FFFE on there to get the actual IPv6 address.